Hello everyone, I'm Zhiyuan Guo from WookLab at UCSD. Today I'm going to present our work, Clio, a hardware software co-designed disaggregating memory system. This is a joint work with Yi Zhou Shan, Xu Hao Luo, Yu Tong Huang, and our advisor Yin Zhang. Let's get started. Now hardware resource disaggregation has been a trend in data center. This means that breaking monolith servers into distributed, network-attached hardware components. Let's take this server for example. In a disaggregated setup, we bring its compute, memory, storage, and even accelerator resources out of server box and attach them to network. This brings better resource utilization, heterogeneity, and flexibility in data center. A lot of recent works are focusing on a specific part called memory disaggregation and showing that memory disaggregation can bring benefits to applications. However, if we look into the paper's evaluation section, we can find that all of these systems are using servers to build or emulate disaggregating memory devices. So a natural question comes, do we need to build real hardware devices for disaggregating memory? Let's answer this question by examining the server-based solutions in a disaggregating environment. In a real hardware memory disaggregation setup, a memory pool would contain standalone memory nodes that connect directly to network and offer shared memory access to multiple clients. Based on this use case, we have the following requirements for disaggregating memory devices. First, it should have similar performance as the real memory resources, which means that their throughput should satisfy the network line rate, and they should have a low and stable latency. Also, it should have large memory capacity. Second, it should remain low extra cost on top of real memory resources. Third, as devices are shared by multiple application processes, they should have good scalability on both hosted memory size and number of connected clients. Last, it should be flexible to support different use cases. Based on those requirements, the first major problem for servers is the cost. Servers are large systems hosting a lot of functions. Only a small part of its functions, as shown in the figure, including memory management, DRAM resources, and network stock is needed by disaggregating memory. Those unused functions may cause waste of resources, and it's against the mingle of hardware resource disaggregation. Also, in server, all of this DRAM is attached directly to the CPU, which limits the server's memory capacity. Moreover, let's take a close look into server's network stock, RDMA. RDMA cannot work on its own. It has to work with servers and its operating systems. As a result, RDMA NICs must use its limited hardware resources to cache OS-managed data structures, including connection info, queue pairs, and memory info, page tables, and memory regions. Limited cache affects the scalability. Any cache miss can cause a huge performance drop. To make things worse, when a data access triggers page fault, the RNIC hardware needs to ask OS to refill the page. This process can take up to 16.8 milliseconds to finish, which is thousands of times slower than normal data access. The root cause of the poor scalability and performance is RDMAs are not designed for standalone memory disaggregation. As servers fail to support memory disaggregation, it's time to build the real hardware. How can we design a real hardware that satisfies all the requirements? Our answer is Clio. Clio is a hardware-based disaggregating memory system that virtualizes, protects, and manages disaggregating memory and standalone memory nodes. Let's first have an overview of Clio interface and system. We present Clio boards, the real hardware-based disaggregating memory boards. Clio boards expose a virtual memory interface to applications. Each application has a separate virtual memory space in Clio system. At compute node, Clio's client library provides metadata and data interface to applications for accessing remote disaggregated memory. Clio also supports extended APIs including key value store and pointer chasing. At memory node, Clio boards are designed to satisfy all the disaggregated memory requirements. Clio boards has a thin, customized network stock. We provide fast and stable virtual memory access through ASIC-based data paths, and flexible control and memory management functions from SOC-based control paths, and also extended APS and computation offloading through a reconfigurable extended path. 
How can we satisfy all the requirements? Our main idea is to eliminate state as much as possible from the hardware. State, by our definition, is the metadata we need to store or access when we're handling memory requests. Why does eliminating state so important? First, storing state takes resources on device, which will greatly increase the cost and limit the scalability. If the size of state is larger than hardware capacity, and we store them at external storage, any external access or cache miss would be slow and cause long tail latency. Last, handling inter-request state can cause dependency between requests. This would often stale the whole processing pipeline. Those are the main reasons for bad performance in existing server-based solutions. Avoiding those states are key to provide low-cost, high scalability, and stable tail latency. So, how can we remove state from our memory node hardware? Our idea is to tailor the system just to fit the memory disaggregation use cases by co-designing the whole system, including hardware, networking, and software. We use four major methods to eliminate state. First, we take a high-level approach, try to reduce the usage of state in our remote memory access protocol. Second, we are trying to move state from memory node hardware to compute node software. Third, we try to move state off the critical path. Finally, for the state that is hard to remove, we are trying to optimize the states to a bounded size so it won't affect our scalability and performance. Let's start with our high-level approach. We first focus on the network side. In non-disaggregated environment, network stack always has a symmetric and reliable setup. However, in disaggregated use cases, we can find the behavior of network transmission is always different. This is our first important observation. Only compute nodes send out requests and memory node only do the responses. With this observation, we can build an asymmetric RPC-style connectionless network stack and remove connection and sending-related network buffers from our hardware. Another important observation comes from the reliable feature. Reliable networks do not allow packet loss or reorder. This always results in large receive set state at the memory node. However, from applications view, they do not always want strict network ordering. One example can be, when sending two packets for a single long write request, since the packets do not have dependency, applications do not care about the arriving order of these two requests at the memory node. This is a common case in disaggregated memory requests. So, by allowing network reorder, we can remove related state from memory node. We still provide memory consistency guarantee by enforcing certain request level ordering at compute node. However, we still need state at network to help with congestion control and handling packet loss. And we can optimize it using our next method, move state to compute node. In our RPC-style network stack, compute node knows sets of all outgoing requests and incoming responses. This gives us a chance to design a congestion control and in-class control algorithm to handle congestion for both requests and response paths purely at the compute node. We are able to move congestion control related state to the client side. Similarly, we observe that only compute node can be aware of all packet loss in both request paths and response paths. After a rare loss happens, compute node can retry the entire request. We again can move retry related state to compute node. After all these efforts, we finally get a network stock with minimized state at memory node, which only contains physical and ethernet layer. At compute node, Clio Lab acts as the transport layer on top of a real ethernet. Next, let's move our focus from network stock to virtual memory system and see how we can eliminate state by removing state from the critical pass. The functions of virtual memory system, including memory management, virtual edge translation, and memory access. We mainly need to process two types of requests in virtual memory system. They are metadata requests like alloc and free, and data requests like read and write. However, those two types of requests have completely different requirements. 
Metadata need to operate on page tables involving a lot of stateful operations and have less strict performance requirements, while data requests have very strict latency, tail latency, and throughput requirements. Since processing data requests is performance critical, we want to remove state from this path. Let's use a method and take state out of the data path. We split the virtual memory system into two isolated regions, a fast data path to handle data requests and a slow path to handle metadata requests. We use software on processors to build slow paths and ASIC hardware to build fast paths. This clean separation between fast access functions and slow, stateful management operations greatly improves off tire latency and scalability. However, one special kind of request still needs state from the slow path. These are requests that access unallocated virtual memory and triggers page fault. When page fault is triggered, the data requests need to go back to slow path and get physical page allocated and the virtual page updated. To move this stateful operation off the critical path, we use a hardware page fault handler at fast path. But how should the page fault handler acquire free physical pages? We added a buffer between the fast and slow path and have the slow path asynchronously insert free physical pages into the buffer. Page fault handler just fetch them from the buffer when I'm needed and update the virtual page accordingly. Using this way, we can handle page fault with only 4 nanosecond additional latency. Our last method is to optimize hard to remove state into a bounded size. Page table can be a good example in our design. In a traditional tiered page table based design, when TRB miss happens, we first need to get its page table based pointer by its process ID, and then use multiple DRAM access to get the correct page table entry. The major problem of this approach is the size of base pointer table as well as page table itself grow with number of clients. This unbounded but must have state can greatly affect the performance. We use a single hash-based page table to solve this problem. This single page table hosts pages for all the clients by mapping hash values to physical pages. So its size is bounded to the size of physical memory on memory nodes. When TRB miss happens, we first hash process ID and the virtual memory address together to get the hash value and then fetch all the page table entries in the bucket in a single DRAM access to get the correct page table entry. We successfully make memory state bounded size and bounded access time. With all the optimizations we mentioned before and more in the paper, we successfully satisfy all the performance requirements for memory disaggregation, including network line rate throughput, low latency and tail latency, large capacity, and good scalability. This is all done with limited hardware resources. That leaves us with the last requirement, flexibility. We aim to allow users to freely run computation at memory side. Beyond those basic memory access steps, we allow computation offloading in extended paths built with FPGA. We allow users to offload computation into reconfigurable areas at hardware speed, leveraging the same virtual memory interface. User can also offload computations into our processor. This satisfies the last flexibility requirement. Further, multiple clear boards can form a distributed system. We allow single virtual memory space to span over multiple memory nodes. At memory allocation time, distributed manager at memory node will work together with clear library at client and global memory manager to decide where to allocate the memory. At memory access time, Clear library will ensure that the request is sent to the correct memory node that holds the physical memory. So, how good do we do? We implement the hardware part of Clio in Spino HDL and prototype Clio boards using Celinx ARM FPJ board. We built and evaluated five real-world disaggregated memory applications with Clio. First, for basic performance, we can achieve that 100 gigabits per second network line rate with 2.8 microsecond average latency and 3.2 microsecond tail latency for read and write operations. Clio can keep a bounded latency for all data access requests, even when page fault happens. In this figure, we compare the write latency for Clio and RDMA in different cases, including page table entry cache miss and even page fault. 
Cleo's tail latency, when page fault happens, is thousands of times smaller than RDMA. We test Cleo's latency on memory requests with increasing sizes. Shown as the orange line in the figure, Cleo's remote memory read and write latency also outperforms other server-based memory disaggregation systems. In a disaggregated environment, we aggregate Cleo's performance when handling large number of concurrent clients and huge memory sizes. We tested latency of random access under different total memory size up to 1 terabyte and different number of clients up to 1000 concurrent clients. We compare Clio with two generations of RDMA NICs, Connect X3 and X5. Clio keeps a bounded access latency regardless of number of clients or memory size, while both generations of RDMA based systems fail to scale. At last, we evaluate Clio with our disregulated memory applications. Our image compression applications really benefit from Clio's stable latency and scalability. With Clio as a disregulated memory device, the application can keep the same finish time with growing number of clients. Well, RDMA-based system starts to slow down as number of clients and amount of memory increases. We evaluated the performance of Clio extended paths by measuring the key value store request latency on SSB dataset. Clio outperforms all server-based disaggregated memory systems. It outperforms Smartnik-based offloading system Hurt Bluefield by 2.5 times. In summary, we built Clio, a real hardware disaggregated memory system. Clio achieves all the requirements of memory disaggregation including performance, cost, scalability, and flexibility. From the experience of building Clio, we can see that building real hardware is both feasible and beneficial to applications. The nature of dis disaggregation proposes new opportunities and challenges, and we realize that co-designing software and hardware system is a key method to solve these challenges. We hope Clio can be a start point and inspire more explorations on real disaggregated hardware systems. If you are interested, please get Clio from our GitHub repo. Thanks for listening.